Hello, hello, everybody. Kelsey Komarowski, founder of Como. I am so excited to be here tonight with Henry. Henry is one of our incredible soon to be or just graduated um, from our eight week intensive. And I'll just be very honest. Um, this interview, this story was not super planned. Henry and I were actually just chatting last night about because Henry's going to Scotland next year and it's amazing and I lived in Scotland for a year I mean anyway so we were chatting and some of the things he shared though in that conversation I was like please like would you be willing to come in and just share this with like our families with the community because I know that there are so many students parents yes but like especially students who feel like school sucks or who feel like they're weighed down by it who just don't have positive feelings towards school that um, I think Henry's story is really inspiring and a really good example of what's possible. So Henry, thank you for agreeing to come on with like basically no notice and share your story. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having me. My absolute pleasure. So Henry, why don't you set the scene for us? Tell us a bit about your history with school, um, you know, just kind of overview about how high school was for you, transition to college, bringing us up until you know, the end of last year. Okay. Um, so I'm currently a sophomore in college, um, but I would say in terms of my high school experience, it was easy and that wasn't a good thing for my future success because for me, it was it was easy enough that I could kind of coast and not really study um, and not really like build those strategies or feel the need to build those strategies because there wasn't really any inspiration for me to do that. Um, <clears throat> and that was all fine and dandy in high school because, you know, I was getting good grades. It was it was all good, but I got to college and it's a very different if you don't have any study skills um, because there's a lot more of expected of you. And if you don't study, you will fail things because it's college. Um, and so I would say I showed up at college and I found myself not really having any motivation um, because I didn't feel confident in what I was doing because um, I didn't have any of those skills, right? I didn't know how to study well or manage my time. Um, and so that left me not feeling prepared for things and not even wanting to try to feel prepared for things because um, I didn't I didn't think I was going to do well. Um, so I would say that coming into the program, that's where I was at. So, OK, Henry, you just articulated that really beautifully. Um, I think there's a couple of things I want to pull out and just really highlight. Um, number one, and I love that you were very candid about this, that getting through in high school with high grades. Um, the good grades obviously are, are a good thing, but that getting them easily means that you likely will struggle and right. not have a good time trying to get them when it's not easy. And it will get harder. Like you said, college, if you don't know how to learn, if you don't know how to study, you'll fail. And normally I'm a little softer, but I like, you're right. Like if you don't know how to do those things, college is a different ball game. Um, they're not going to be holding your hand to try to make sure that you pass. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. And I wouldn't say it was like specifically subject matter things. I would say one of the differences would be in college, they will give you an essay prompt or whatever, and you have to, you know, use your own critical thinking skills to analyze something outside of what the scope of what we talked about in class was, as opposed to generally in high school, it would be pretty straightforward based on the study guide. Um, and there would, it would, there wouldn't be really any outside synthesis of anything. So I think that like, this kind of program is really important for prioritizing, you know, critical thinking skills so you can succeed outside of like the set parameters of what assignments usually are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Henry, that, that's so important. Um, and for any high school students, like grade 11, grade 12, especially, um, I would even rewind and replay what Henry just shared because it's, it's some of the best um, advice slash insights I, I think I've ever heard. Um, it's so true. You're the autonomy and the independent engagement and reflection you're expected to conduct. I think most high school graduates, they simply don't even have an idea of how of how much harder it is um, and how much without that skill set, it simply can't be done. doesn't matter how smart you are. It's not about intelligence. It's about do you have that skill of knowing the steps for unpacking and analyzing, et cetera. Right. Okay. So, so Henry, you were, did you, were you expecting that? Like when you went to college, were you thinking like, oh, high school is pretty easy. This might be challenging. Or was it a surprise? So for me, I knew people that thought my high school was as easy as I did. And then there were people that thought my high school was harder than I did. Obviously. I mean, somebody's always, somebody's always smarter than you. Somebody's 
you know, you're always smarter than somebody else, like in that category in terms of school. And so I feel like I got um, to college and people, you know, said it was going to be harder, but I was like, okay, people said high school was going to be difficult and my high school really wasn't. And so I got there um, and then it was, and it wasn't hard in terms of homeworks or things that I knew theoretically how to write well. Um, but I think it was hard almost entirely because of time management, because in high school you have a very structured day, right? You're there. My high school started kind of late. It was 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, and you have all that built in time and that built in accountability. Um, you have sports or whatever in high school. So you get home and you know, after dinner, you have two hours to do all your things you need to do. Like that is, that is your time for homework. In mm -hmm. college, you'll have one class at 9 a.m., one class at 3 p.m. And so the time in between that, you either spend, you know, playing video games with your friends or like actually mapping out when you're going to do work. But there's no there's no built in accountability in terms of your schedule. And there's also not teachers who are, you know, going after you and emailing you about things. Right. Like that's I think one of the other important distinctions is teachers aren't checking up on you as frequently. Your parents aren't there. Um, and so unless you have your own calendar, it can be very hard to like stay on top of things and prioritize doing schoolwork. Yeah. Yeah, Henry, totally. And I, I think you said something that also just bears shining a light on it. You mentioned a couple of times, like you just mentioned, like mapping out your schoolwork and like man it, that word management, because most high school students, they, they do their work if they do it at all. They'll sit down and it's like, okay, what homework do I have? And they do it. And there's not a lot of strategic thinking that goes into, well, here are the moving pieces and like, how can I manage and like plan out these different things that I have to do, competing priorities, what have you. It's just generally in high school, the workload is such that you can just do it. Um, so even that, like, were you expecting that piece in college of like, oh my gosh, I actually have to spend time planning or was that something that came a bit later? What's interesting because now I feel like that, that ability to manage my time freely, freely is actually really refreshing because in high school, right, you, they don't give you assignments very far in advance. And so typically you're doing things the day before it's due and you only have very certain amounts of time to do it. Like say, oh, I have practice. I can do this between eight and 9 PM. Right. But now I generally know where and when everything is due during the semester. Um, and I can get things done a week in advance because I have all this other time and you, it's either there for you to use it or you don't use it. So if you are using it, it's honestly a freeing feeling because you have, you have the ability to plan in advance and like reward yourself for that management and getting things done a week before. Whereas in high school, you know, it's so structured that it's harder to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You've, you've really vividly illustrated the kind of, it's a, it's a different playing field, so to yeah. speak. Um, so Henry then, so for your first year, as far as like that kind of, oh no, this is actually harder. Um, at what stage did you think or realize like, oh man, like I need, I need to change something up. Like I need to do something different. Like, did you seek help that first year? Did you kind of just like let it flow? Like what, how did you handle that first year, those challenges? I think that I kind of did both. So it was the super COVID year, um, which definitely. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't heard that before. The super COVID, not right. I mean, that was, yeah. And this is technically a COVID year, but I feel that was that was the super COVID year. And like being a first year in college, it's not the optimal year um, for the super COVID year. Um, so part of it was like, it was very hard to reach out, like in terms of school, because things weren't open and we were online. Um, and so I think I could identify the problem, but I didn't really know what resources I had to solve it just because all my classes were on Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, which which meant that like offices weren't open and that kind of thing so like I think I theoretically knew what the issues were um but I didn't really have a it's like set in stone plan of how to solve it and was that pretty much the duration of first year would you say yeah I would say that second semester was a little better than first semester but I don't think that I was attaining the goals that I wanted and the goals that I expected coming out of high school Okay. So tell us like briefly, if you were to list off, like, you know, maybe tell us if you're comfortable sharing, you know, the grades that you were getting and then like one or two things that kind of characterized whether it's, you know, whether you thought you were procrastinating a lot or you weren't motivated or just like what were kind of some of the main yeah. 
Um, I would say I was getting like generally a few A minuses, a lot of Bs, and a few C pluses was what I was getting first, um, like first year of college. And I don't think I'd ever gotten a C in high school. And so that was like a big, I was, I was upset. Um, and in terms of things, I would say motivation was really difficult. Um, mostly because like, I don't know how much of it was being online, but I would say a lot of it was definitely, um, not feeling confident in my work and time management. Um, mm-hmm. So like that combination, I think now, especially still with COVID for people in high school, it's, it's definitely something you got to respect as being a motivational issue um, yeah. or like a factor for that. Um, and then other things I would say, like the hardest part about the first year of college would be just the multitude of distractions that exist as being somebody because you have all these random new people you're supposed to be meeting and hanging out with right and you have unlimited freedom to like go out to dinner every night or things like that and you learn that you run out of money so you're not going to do that but (laughs) um you know there are all these distractions that are thrown in your face because you're not at home um and so it's important to respect those because it's your first year of college and you just end up getting more work second year of college so first year college you should go out and meet new people all the time um, but it's learning to balance that is definitely important. That, that is well said. Um, Henry, you make me laugh. I love that you drop in these like very personal anecdotes, mm-hmm. um, very casually. That's great. Um, yeah, learn to budget is important. Um, yeah. okay. So let us, let's fast forward to your second year. Um, what, like, what were you thinking based on this first year you've established like, Hey, this was suboptimal. There were different factors. I'm definitely not feeling confident in my ability to motivate or complete the work at the level I want. Um, time management, big thing. What did you have in mind going into second year? Like, did you know, I want help getting set up? Did you think I'm going to give it a go and just see what happens and try to work harder? Like what was your mentality going into second year in light of your experience? So I, I figured I'm just going to give it a go because it was in person. And so for me, I kind of was like, oh, that was definitely all because of COVID. I'm just going to you know, show up in person and do super well. Um, and so I said I would be, I went with just giving it a go. Okay. And how did that, how did that go? Um, it wasn't, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't, it wasn't optimal. Again, like I, I feel like at the first, cause I, st- I started Como probably four weeks into the semester, I would guess. Um, but in those first four weeks, I didn't really have grades that much, um, but I wouldn't say I was feeling confident with mapping out the rest of the semester, right? Because like in the first two weeks of everything, people will have 200s in random classes and be like, oh, this is all going well. And then it kind of all fizzles as the semester <laughs> goes on. It's generally how I feel like it happens, you know? your grade just kind of slowly drops as everything happens, um, which I think definitely happened to me a lot. Um, but like, I think this program was just like, was really helpful because it didn't have my grades end up having that slow, sad fizzle um, because I like, you know, could plan out my whole semester and feel really good about it. So that's awesome, Henry. And let's talk about how did you, how did you find out about us? Um, Like when Henry's mentioning the program, he's talking about our our eight week program. How did you find out about us? And what was your, like, I like your thoughts on it at first. And you can be very honest here, Henry. I won't take offense. Um, My mom told me about it. um, And she recommended it as like an option for me. Um, And at first I was like, I don't need an option like that. Um, Because I was like, oh, it's in person. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. And I think that one thing is sometimes you don't realize there's a problem and until somebody gives you a very good solution. So for me, like, I didn't, it's like, I didn't know there was a problem until I was saying like finishing the Como evening program, I looked back and I was like, wow, like that I definitely was in a much different place then than I am now. Um, but I don't think some people will see that. I think a lot of people won't see that until you're past it. So, yeah. That Henry, that is a brilliant insight that you might not realize that there's actually a problem until somebody presents a solution. So walk us through a little bit and, and just for, for anybody who is new to us or who might not know, um, 
and actually, Henry, sorry, I'll let you explain. What's, um, how would you explain the program to somebody who has no idea what it's about? What, how would you describe it in brief? <clears throat> the way that I would describe it to people that would ask me about what I was doing twice a week um, would be, it's like taking on another class. Like, it's like the equivalent of taking on another eight week class. Um, especially at college, it's kind of easier to equate that, but I, it's, I think it would work for high school too. Um, and so you would meet twice a week on like very established SSA calls um, on Monday, Wednesday nights. And then there are STEM calls twice a week too. Um, and then you have online lessons and unlimited help with your, whoever your um, person is. So I had Tasha, who's awesome. Um, and so I would describe Como generally as another class that teaches you both why learning is important and how to learn efficiently to the point that you can succeed at whatever your specific goals are. Because I think that it can be applied to a a wide variety of goals, like academically, because people are very different places and just generally where you want to go because you have everything from resume help to reading comprehension things. And so I think that like you can either hyper-focus on something that you know and can identify as something you want to work on, or you can generally go through it um, and cover everything. And both are powerful for different reasons. Henry, that's so well said. I might um, copy that verbatim and start using it to, to explain to people what it's about. That's That's so awesome. Thank you for that really awesome description. And so for you, essentially that process of, of learning, what would you say for you was the most helpful? Like you've, you've really set up some of the challenges you faced. Um, and Henry, I'll just, I'll qualify why I'm getting specific here because a lot of students, and you've alluded to this, especially in high school or maybe just starting out college, um, or even especially if they're like grade nine, 10, and they might not quite have the context for what is to come that they think even like hearing that of like, Oh, it's extra work. I don't want more on my plate. You know, and there's a lot of like resistance to like, I don't want to do that. And obviously it's, it's, it's easy for me to say, oh my gosh, but it's going to save you so much time in the long run. Like, yeah, you're putting in a bit more time to learn this stuff, but you're going to save so much in the long run. Um, can you speak to that in your experience? Yeah. Um, again, just candidly as, as you are. So I would say the, the, the biggest quantifiable difference would be first semester right now I'm taking four classes for 16 hours. Next semester, I'm taking five classes and an internship on campus. And so my extra commitment to three, four hours a week of work um, and the meetings, maybe not even that much, like maybe an hour of work in the meetings, um, has given me the ability to take an extra class and feel confident in that and feel confident doing an internship too and preparing for a study abroad trip. And so I have a, a lot more on my plate that I next semester than I do this semester. Um, and on top of that, by taking more, I've, I've set myself up well for a double major, which is nice. And I feel confident I would be good doing that. Um, so, but the other thing, if you were in high school, you haven't thought about yet is that your schedule needs to include random things like getting groceries or a haircut or changing your oil or washing your sheets, which you should do regularly. Um, and so you might think, oh, this is only important for school, you know, after school, this isn't going to be helpful, but it's going to be helpful for the rest of your life because you also need to get a haircut and change your oil when you're 60. So like that, the habit of it sets you up forever. Um, and even if you aren't in school, um, and so for me, it built in time for me to do things like, you know, call to schedule appointments or, email people about random internship opportunities or do the super annoying process for applying for study abroad. So like I was building an extra time to do that kind of thing, which is almost as powerful, if not more powerful than like the actual academic planning itself, because you open yourself up to more possibilities. Yeah. I I love those examples. There's such, um, again, just really strongly illustrating you can use your schoolwork to build out these life skills and like school's going to end, but you're going to need to work and hopefully find work that is meaningful and that pays well. And like all of these things and having that skill set and often the mindsets of like, 
okay, this is something I can actually make happen. Um, and Henry, let's, let's just, I want to talk about what you created for yourself. And I know we're coming to the end of our time, but, um, you know, we talk a lot about ownership and about how incredibly capable you are. Anybody listening to this as a parent, as a student, like as a human, your ability to decide and create the types of experiences that you want in your life. Um, you know, it's really strong. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. And I think Henry, what you've done with this incredible Scotland trip is such an awesome example right. of what is possible when you do create the time and the space for yourself to pursue things that you actually want to do. Can you just, again, like kind of in brief, run us through how, like what this opportunity and how you made it happen. This is not something that fell into your lap that magically was like, Oh, I get to do this. Mm-hmm. You put in the effort and intent and strategy to make it so. Yeah. So I, my mom, I feel like my mom ends up sending me everything. So my mom <laughs> sent me, um, like a flyer about a Celtic Christianity and Scottish history class. Um, it's in the religion department um, in Scotland for two weeks at the start of the summer. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I've never been to Scotland. Um, so I looked at it and I, looked at it and I was like, oh, this looks really cool. I really want to do this. Um, and I realized that like, because I had finished my work through the end of the week and it was Wednesday, I was like, Oh, I actually have time to, you know, apply to this. And because I think that some people, especially in high school, I know I did this, you would look at something, it would be cool. Um, and then you would look at the application process and it became very much less cool. Um, the longer it was. And like, so I looked at this and there were like four or five short answer essay questions. Um, and at first I was like, Oh, I don't want to do this anymore. And then I was like, wait, I don't have anything else to do now because I finished all my work. Um, and so I had the time to do that and like actually have thoughtful answers. Um, Cause I think a lot of people say, Oh, I have an hour to do this. I'm going to breeze through it. But I knew I felt confident in my answers. I knew I could spend an hour figuring out how to get my passport figured out and health forms and things. Um, and so I had the extra time to do that. And I think the important thing that I talked about with Tasha before um, was having the energy to do that because mm. you need both. So I had both the time and the energy. I think the energy part is important because when you are completing things early and often and feel good about all of them, school becomes energizing rather than draining. Um, And if you feel confident in everything, you're getting grades back that are meeting your goals. You have time to do things outside of class. It doesn't become completely debilitating to go to school. And so when you do that, you can give thoughtful answers and fill out health forms. And while that isn't the most glamorous thing that comes out of being energized, I think it's really important because it gives you the opportunity to build whatever you want for yourself. Yeah. And the, the Scotland, there's a couple of things here, but the Scotland trip that Henry's taking just because this is one of, it's so, so cool. It's a pilgrimage, you guys. It's not like he goes and stays in Edinburgh for a week and flies home. You're flying to Edinburgh for a few days and then walking for like yeah. two weeks. Walking for two well, weeks in the countryside. It's going to be awesome. It, it's going to be so awesome. Like I'm, I'm so excited for you. It's going to be amazing. Um, and that is, uh, th- yeah, it's, that's what an incredible experience that otherwise, you know, I think most people probably don't have that, but also most people I don't think went through the experience that you went through showed up like you did and like really got that stuff for themselves. And so Henry, I think what you said about the energy I think that's so important and I want to make it really clear for our students because I know most students, at least most that I speak with, who are really struggling um, and they do feel like they, they don't want to do it. They're not motivated. They, they hate it or they think it's dumb and like, you know, it's just such a battle. It's exhausting. Um, yeah. You know, what is that? What's that nexus? What is that link from going from this is heavy and a lot and I don't want to do it to feeling energized by actually doing it? Um, I would say, and this part of this comes with just, getting older um is recognizing that while some subjects will feel pointless to you um the habits that you build will be important forever right so i personally despise math classes um and i luckily i don't i only have to take one more math class ever which is statistics um nice um but i think that like anything that you don't like um, if you treat it more as a, treat it more as, a, as a, a way that you're required to get experience in school because you're required to take it. So 
think of it as required experience that you have to get in school as opposed to, you know, this torturous class that I have to like survive through to the end because you're taking it either way, right? You're taking it whether you're going to enjoy it or not. And so it seems to me like it's a waste of your time and whoever is teaching it's time if you don't try to get the most out of it. Um, and when you do get the most out of it, it becomes energizing because you're accomplishing something rather than surviving something. Mm -hmm. That perspective is, is so incredibly powerful. And I think it's also worth emphasizing what Henry is talking about. There's no external shift that happens. This is purely a decision that you make. You're the only person capable of making it. Like Henry, you chose that. And it doesn't, like theoretically, it doesn't even matter if your grades change because you're getting something out of it more important than that. But I think that your grades inherently will change for the better if you do do this. Yeah, definitely. And then as we've talked about, the more action you're taking with that kind of positive intent and like that mindset of like, okay, well, I'm building something important here, the easier it becomes to take action. And I think that's where that motivation and feeling energized, it's just that upward cycle. That's um, Henry, that's awesome. Okay. So Henry, what's um, just a couple final questions here. What is, is there one piece of advice that you would give to students who are struggling right now and who might even be watching this being like, well, that's all well and good for this kid, um, you know, but probably won't work for me. Like, you know, kids who are just struggling, who don't like school, it's not a fun thing for them. What advice would you give? I would say have a healthy obsession with your schedule um, is the best thing. Um, I know that we talked about this yesterday a little bit, but I missed having my schedule for a day when I was traveling home for break and I was freaking out. I was like, oh my God, I don't know where my schedule is. I haven't looked at my schedule all day. I haven't planned out my day yet. Um, And so like having a plan and being able to stick to that plan um, in multiple locations, I know that I have varying degrees of my future schedule in three different locations, both on paper and on my computer um, is super important and can be life-changing. And I see the other thing, which I've started doing because it's fun, is finding a fun way for you to write things. So I got like a super swanky legal pad, which I love now. And I show it to everybody and nobody cares. Can you show it to us? It's cool. It's like thick. It's got some like leather. (laughs) Um, So find something that's enjoyable for you to write on or type on. Some people, like I know in the past, I've like sticky notes or like just have something that you can find some level of enjoyment out of it. I've spent more on this legal pad than I spent on like food that week, but it's worth it if it's like super fun for you to write on. Like I want to fill it up with things because it's fun. Um, So that sounds stupid, but like find whatever, you know, strategy, if you like to, you know, write with a stylus or something, as opposed to, you know, typing on your computer, or just find some way to make that scheduling enjoyable, you know, reward yourself with something afterwards, like candy or, you know, a drink or something fun. I know that my, I started journaling um, in the five minute journal, if anyone's heard of that. Um, And um, my gift for myself, I like committed to it for a week was I was going to buy myself this like really expensive kombucha, um, for no reason, but it was super nice. And that was like a great gift for myself for doing that. Um, and so like finding gifts for things is really important in setting that habit, but yeah. That's awesome, Henry. We have very similar um, incentives. <laughs> You're talking about candy and kombucha. That's yeah. awesome. And that what you shared is, is so smart. And I, I love even the words that you used at the outset, have a healthy obsession with the schedule. Um, because at the end of the day, that is what what grounds you and what puts you in control of quite literally everything else. If you don't have a schedule, you're really not in control of whatever, whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, Yeah. That's awesome. And then Henry, last question, because we did your amazing mom made a couple of sneak appearances in our conversation. Um, Do you have any, any thoughts for parents who might be, you know, trying to help kids who are struggling, who, you know, want them to do better, who, you know, any, any, any thoughts about, parents, um, wise words for parents from, from your perspective. Hmm. I would say the one thing, um, one is let your children have their own experience with it. Right. Like I, I know that I am in college and my mom is not there constantly. 
um, when I'm doing it, but like I can imagine feeling like my parents were commandeering my experience um, or like checking up constantly about how my meetings are going and that kind of thing. My mom would sometimes text me and be like, how was tonight um, on the call? And I'd be like, it was good, but that would be it because I feel like it needs to be your thing. Um, and as much as like your parents involved, the parents calls and like the financial side of it, it's like super important for you to have your own experience because it's not going to be helpful if you feel like it's coming from your parents. Also as people who are anywhere in the teenage age group, it can be super annoying if your parents are telling you to do something or, you know, finish your coma work, get on the call, that kind of thing. Like, have you finished that lesson yet? Like nagging in terms of that kind of thing. And it's like loving nagging, right? Because you want your kids to finish all the stuff and like get the most out of it. But if they're not going to get the most out of it, if you're telling them to do so. Yeah. Henry, I'm, I wasn't expecting that. And I'm so, I'm so happy that you shared that because that is something I feel like people like teens, young adults don't believe me when I'm like, this is not about your mom or dad. Like, yeah. if you don't want to do it, we're not enrolling you. Like, this is your journey. Like understand that. And we often like try to rein in parents. Cause we're like, this is their journey. Let them enjoy it. Mm-hmm. So anyway, guys, you just heard it from Henry. It's true. Um, your learning journey is your learning journey. And we like really help you protect that and defend it unapologetically. Um, cause that's the only way at the end of the day that you learn. Right. Um, Henry, thank you so much for this incredible, um, unexpected and like such a wonderful interview. So helpful. I, I think that you had your insights and just your, your story in general is, is going to speak to a lot of people. So thank you for taking the time. Um, for everybody listening, um, Henry's journey started with a simple phone call. Um, as it always does, you guys can go to comoconsulting.com backslash get started now to book your intro call. Um, and we'll discuss your learning journey or your child's learning journey um, and how we can help them feel energized and excited with school and all that good stuff. Um, And in the meantime, take care and we'll catch you on the next interview. Bye guys.